Well, welcome everyone. This is the Congressional Art and Fashion Association's first series of our Hill Highlight, Meet the Artist. And what we do is we highlight some of the amazing creatives that we have on Capitol Hill, including staff and members of Congress. And I'm very excited to have with us today a very amazing member of Congress. She is a lawyer. She is a women's issues, women's rights champion. And she is also a very profound artist. She is a painter and we are glad to have you with us today. Thank you so much, Congressman Franco. Great to be with you. Thank Hope you. everybody's safe. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, this is a really unique, tough time. And one of the things I wanna talk about your amazing art and the story behind it, Congresswoman. Um, but I also wanna talk about this moment that we're in right now and what, what it means uh, when we talk about art and fashion in this space. Um, you are one of the co-chairs of the Democratic Women's Caucus, mm -hmm. and this is a special year as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of uh, the 19th Amendment and the passage and the women's right to vote. Uh, August, we just recently celebrated Women's Equality Day, and when we talk about the suffrage movement, we see uh, a group screams streets full of women, and they're dressed in white and they're demanding their, their right to vote. And recently, uh, we've seen you join other women of Congress dressed in white. And what I want to ask from, from you and your perspective, what did that visual symbol, it's clothes, it's fashion, but what did it mean for you back in the suffrage movement? And what did that mean to, to dress in solidarity in this time? Well, first of all, thanks for the interview. I'm very excited with your new organization. I love the idea of promoting art. I should have worn my white today, but I, <laughs> you know, I decided just to be colorful. Yes. So, you know, when you think back uh, to the suffragettes, what do I think of? I think of uh, courage and persistence, especially, right? Um, unity of purpose. Uh, the suffragettes uh, started with, I think, three colors. It was uh, gold, and then purple and white. And then in, in Europe, in London, I think the gold became green. And it's so interesting because the white, uh, they, they had a message for each color. And uh, the, the white was supposed to stand for purity and virtue so that they did not intimidate the men. Isn't that well, funny? Well. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the reason I think the, the reason white became the most prominent color is because it was an easy uh, item for for women to uh, wear to get and because in those days it was really black and white uh, newsprint and the white stood out mm -hmm. so that's that's really sort of the background for that and of course over the years it became very symbolic and so uh, for the, uh, the women in the house, uh, we, we, we decided that we needed a, uh, we are very unified, uh, the Democrat, Democratic women, with a message uh, of uh, unity and advancement, which is what the suffragettes was about. That was about the vote. We're about equal pay for equal work. Uh, family and medical leave, quality childcare, access to full reproductive rights, just a few of the things that we fight for. And we thought it was especially important for us to show the public that we're still fighting. We are still out there like our suffragette sisters. We have a unity of purpose. We have persistence and we will fight for the advancement of women and girls. That, that. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Uh, I love to hear the history behind uh, a lot of what we do um, and the nonverbal communication that comes through uh, just some of our art and fashion. Uh, so I, I want to talk about uh, the story behind you and your art. Uh, I remember okay. the first time <laughs> that I, I walked into your office and I saw all of these paintings and they, they all looked like they were from the same collection. And <laughs> 
they I'm, I'm wondering like who the congressman must be in love with some artist who is this and um the staff told me that congressman painted these she painted all of them and i was so impressed and it they made me smile that's how i felt when i saw the painting um so i just want to want to learn when did you start uh painting like this and uh what what motivated you to really choose this particular aesthetic you looks like you have one of them right behind you. Oh, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to answer your question, but I want to tell you so, sort of a funny story. Okay. What you saw is uh, the collection in with th three phases. There's the Lois, there's the Wois, uh -huh. and there's the Lolo. Okay. So, I, and then I'll go back and answer your question. So, when I started mm -hmm. with my paintings, I signed everything Lois. L-O-I-S, that's my name. And then I got reminded of a story of when I was in, I guess I was going to a high school reunion and someone sent me a, a picture from my yearbook and it reminded me of a story. So when I was just a young person going into, I think it was, uh, it would be, what's the first year of high school? Is that like ninth grade or? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the lower grades, I was so excited. I was a thespian. I was in all the school plays. I'd get the lead. I had so much fun. When I got to high school, I was so excited to do that. And I tried out for a play and I got no part. And I asked the drama teacher, you know, what happened? And she said to me, you don't pronounce your L's. You say Wois. And she made me she said, you can't be in plays, you have to be, she made me the chair of the props committee. Okay. Or actually the furniture committee. So <laughs> what, what, my yearbook, my yearbook description of me was Lois Frankel, chair of the furniture committee. <laughs> so I decided I would start to sign my paintings, Lois, just as a throwback. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. But it changed because my new paintings are signed Lolo. Okay. And that's what my grandson is gonna call me. He's only 20 months and that's actually what oh. he does call me. He calls me Lolo. Oh, congratulations. Okay. So <laughs> those are my three, my three phases. But wow. here's how I started. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go back to when I was uh, just out of law school and I became a clerk for a judge and he, he was, he was blind. So I had to uh, sit with him at the courtroom every second. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes after a while, you know, things get a little monotonous mm -hmm. and I would start to doodle just to keep my concentration. And then mm -hmm. that just carried out to really to my committee work. Uh, eventually I got elected to the Florida legislature and then to, I was, became mayor of West Palm Beach and then of course in Congress. And what I found myself doing, either when I was on very long telephone conversations or I was in very long meetings, I would just doodle and it just unconsciously, just to keep my concentration. So I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to do it on a Zoom, but I did find myself, I must have been a very long Zoom that I started to, uh, <laughs> let me see if you can see it. Yes. Okay, there's a little doodle. Yes. Okay. I love it. Yes. But they started to become very intricate and so forth. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'd color in them. It depended how long the call was or whatever. And then one day, uh, this was in 1999, mm -hmm. my, uh, my best friend said to me, why don't you put the, your doodles on a canvas and paint them? And that's really what started. Uh, I started to just sketch them on a canvas. And I started to paint and that was it. Uh, I use acrylic paints. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, it introduced me to a whole new world. Just to let you know, I've had no training. I don't have, mm -hmm. truthfully, I have no clue what I'm doing. I just seem to have a knack for knowing how to put colors together. Yes. And I will tell you something else. Mm -hmm. I have no recollection of any painting I've ever done. Doing the painting. None. Really? Yeah. It's okay. totally subliminal. I'm in another oh, world. 
uh, you talk about phases also, you go through phases in terms of the music. Phase one, it was Dixie Chicks all the time. <laughs> I painted the Dixie Chicks. Uh, and then also a lot to Diana Ross and the Supremes. I love Motown. That's yeah. big time. Mm -hmm. And now uh, a little bit more modern. So, you know, it depends on what, what the pop music is. Wow. That, God, that's, now you answered part of my other, my next question was <laughs> what your process was. Yeah. And I, 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 so you love to put some music. Yes. And you, okay. And your acrylic art, do you have to close out all other distractions? Or are you always? Well, I have no other, yeah. I mean, I do, yeah. you know, my painting, it's been a little limited now because of the COVID. Uh, not that I'm, I have access. I'm in my home. I have a little, I, when I, I, I actually took half of a bathroom and I put up my own little art studio on it. Okay. And uh, I have access to it, but really I'll tell you when I do my art now mm -hmm. is on the weekends with my grandson. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got uh, an Etch-a-Sketch mm -hmm. and there's a, a program called Kidopia with, with iPad, with, that's with an iPad that you actually, it's, it's, it's crazy. You, you, you can color in the, the uh, picture with, you hit a crayon color and you color mm -hmm. it in. So we yeah. do that a lot. Okay. Um, th and that's beautiful that you're able to, to share your art yeah. with your grandson and, yeah. and continue the tradition. Um, kind of I hear the times when you, you do your art and you prioritize, sounds like you really prioritize time uh, to engage with your art. Um, I know there are some folks who see art as a, a, a necessity in our culture and our society, and we just view it maybe just as aesthetics or, or something not that important. Um, but for you, what, what has art meant to you in your personal life? How important uh, or necessary do you view art for you personally? Yeah. yeah. So just to let you know, I usually, the, the good thing about having a little art studio set up in my... Uh, apartment here, small apartment is, I, you know, I, 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 I'm a night owl. So most of my art is probably done between 11 PM and 2 PM, 2 AM. Oh, wow. Okay. But you know, it's good. I can run in and do it if I can't sleep or, you know, sometimes on the weekends. Uh, for me, it's just been a great release, I guess, of, of the stresses of the world. Mm -hmm. um, my paintings, I can tell so far, uh, I'm staying, uh, you can tell by most of my paintings, they're pretty colorful, right? Yes. So I think my emotional state for most times has been pretty good when I paint. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting. I once, uh, maybe several years ago, I had a very dark painting. I looked at it, I said, what? Why did I paint this? And it turned out, I painted it during uh, the week after a very good friend of mine had lost her reelection. I mean, it was like a very bad campaign season. I was, the only thing I could really, really attribute it to it was just sort of like a, a bummer week that I had had. But most of the time you can see it's like, uh, I don't even know. When did I do this? Let's see. Th that's one of the first paintings I ever did. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But so I listen, I, I and you know, mm -hmm. I just what I want to say is uh, creativity is not only uh, so satisfying, I think, for me and for people, it doesn't have to be painting, it could be music, it could be clay, it could be sewing, something mm -hmm. that you should be feel free to relieve your mind of everyday problems because it will refresh you up to meet the challenges. But I just I want to say something else about art which I think is important because I know in, we, we've had a, uh, uh, you know, challenge trying to get help for art organizations, especially mm -hmm. during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I know, I remember there was some criticism by uh, some members who said, well, you know, why, why are we, why are we putting money into this frivolous stuff? Well, listen, you know, uh, first of all, I, art and music is not frivolous to me. Mm -hmm. It's what brings us together. It's the great unifier. It tells the history of the world. Uh, when you go to, I know when I travel, when I could travel, obviously, 
before the pandemic, I would always say, you know, if I'm going, is there a museum? Museum I can take, you know, take some time and so I do. I think that uh, it's what keeps us not only sane but humane. Uh, art and music and all forms of culture, to me, we should promote it and we should support it and we should fund it. That's, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I, I think that's a, a, a beautiful way to, to wrap this up. Um, thank you so much for just your example of someone who can champion advocacy and also recognize the importance of fueling yourself so you can continue that zealous advocacy and, and introducing and keeping arts into your life and into your space helps to do just that. Uh, so I thank you so much for your time. Oh, well, great inspired. to be with you. Hey, listen, if you can sneak yeah. into my office, you know, just take a video of all the paintings. Okay. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. Okay. Congresswoman Frankel. Nice to see you. Um, absolutely. Florida. Oh, I got one question for you. What kind of art yes. do you do? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I love sewing and I also just enjoy crafting. Nice. And uh, I've, I've been able to do some of that during the pandemic. Also, like uh, reconstruction, uh, sewing, meaning taking a garment, taking it apart, uh -huh. and making it into something new. And uh, like you said, it's, it is therapeutic. And I, I love to find time. Uh, to do that and it it recharges me in a lot of ways so yeah. i'll have to show you some pictures sometimes so. okay please do I okay will. i will so nice to see you you as well thank you everybody so much, be safe Congress. yes you as well thank you we appreciate it and then i think we're going to end our recording today we're going to chop it congresswoman we're going to send it to your staff when we've uploaded okay. this appreciate you